Hello. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about the Obert effect, which is the phenomenon uh, that sh that will that shows that if you uh, move at a very high speed, you no know, near periapsis, you will get more energy out of your burns. You know, you you will get a higher apoapse. Um, other people, including Scott Manley, have already done videos about this phenomenon. Now you'll see him. Uh, flying in Minmus, you know, once doing a prograde burn from the, near this very high moon, and seeing how far he gets in the solar system, how high he, he gets epilepsis, and once doing it with the Obert effect, you no know, first plummeting down the Kerbin, you know, making a retrograde burn, you no know, plummeting down the Kerbin, and doing a burn from there. And you know that is way more efficient. Um, and however, I think they do a really good job at demonstrating the effect. I don't think they do a really good job at explaining why it works. So for the longest time, I didn't understand you know, how these rockets mag magically you know, seem to get more energy by burning at uh, these uh, at periapsis at these very high speeds. And uh, I was looking on the internet and people were saying things about you know, getting more potential energy out of your fuel and you know, if you uh, make burns you know, over bigger distances, distances, you know, you'll you'll uh, use your fuel more efficiently. Now there are a whole bunch of explanations on the internet about why the Obert effect works, but none of these explanations made any sense to me. You no, know, they were talking about you know where you know, uh, this phenomenon got its energy from, and not really why it worked. Um, but I think, you no, know, not uh, recently, you know, I can, I got, you know, why this phenomenon occurs, why it works, and that's what I want to tell, uh, show in this video, uh, how I think uh, this effect works, and you know, to make it a little bit more logical. So, uh, just uh, imagine, uh, you know, a normal uh, a planet, you no, know, that's uh, with a rocket. So this is the planet. And then you get a rocket that is orbiting this planet. Um, I want to simplify this uh, for uh, the sake of uh, I want to do some math and and also show why it works. So I want so just imagine that this is uh, not a planet but a singularity, and the rocket has barely any uh, horizontal speed. It's just going up and down so you can imagine this so you can also imagine this you know it's very similar to a basket uh, ball you can you know, see a basketball and you know, it falls down to the ground and it bounces right back up just the same thing as this rock is doing with this singularity so now comes uh, uh, the math uh, part um, imagine uh, a rocket or a basketball doesn't really matter which one you now moving at 30 meters per second or in the case of rocket it would be probably like 30 kilometers per second um, it will get you no know, get pulled down by the earth you know at 10 meters per second so in three seconds it will be at a standstill standstill so 30 divided by 10 uh, equals 3 so you get you no know, uh, Three seconds you know, of movement and average speed will be 15 meters per second. If you multiply these, you know, moving for three seconds with average speed of three, will make it so you get uh, you know, 45 you know, meters traveled. Now, now comes the Obert effect into play. Imagine a rocket, this rocket you no. Know, uh, burning at its uh, when it got when it gets at its highest point point you no know, burning upwards so it gets a little nudge or the basketball you know, getting at the highest point a little nudge maybe you can already see that you no know, this is a kind of feel or see that this are a, a little bit ineffective so you give it a little nudge of like two meters per second and you get all this you know, stuff again. Two meters per second. Uh, 
No, uh, 2 divided by 10 is uh, 0 0.2. Uh, and the average speed will be 1 meters uh, per second. And if you multiply these uh, two, you'll get uh, 0 0.2 uh, meters uh, traveled. And if you add those two up, you'll see you know, that you'll have you know, 45.2 meters. And I think you can already see where this is going. Imagine this rocket or basketball having gotten a nudge while it was already moving, you know, when it just started bouncing upwards, you know, when it was moving at its highest speed, then the rocket would have not been would have been going 32 meters per second. So you'll, yeah, you'll probably already see where this is going. If you divide this by uh, 10, you know, you'll uh, see that you'll be moving for uh, 3.2 seconds, and the average speed will have been 16 meters per second, and if you multiply these two, you'll see that you'll have moved uh, uh, 51.2 meters. So, what I'm trying, uh, so the way I see it, you know, this is obviously bigger, you know, you'll, you'll get this Obert effect, and the reason I see that this is working. No, not, not, I don't mean not where the energy is coming, but why this works is the, uh, by, you know, immediately at the beginning of going up or so giving this little bit of extra speed, the, the extra two meter per second you know, was protected by the rest of the speed, you know, protected within quotation marks, and it had more time to affect the ball. And where this energy is coming from, well, like I said in the beginning, this has probably something to do with potential energy and, you know, moving uh, the ball, uh, uh, moving the, uh, the exhaust, you know, uh, having been expelled at a less, less power. Uh, you know, imagine the exhaust, you know, that has left the rocket. You know, that will be now uh, moving very close, you know, to Earth. To the Earth, so it is in less powerful in an, in an orbit with less energy. So maybe this has helped you understand it, and you know, uh, and you know, you can use it to your power in, uh, now nah, for instance, global space program. Because I don't really know where else you could use it. But uh, this was a video.